All right, hey gang. Um, I recently bought a used guitar amp, and the reverb didn't work. So I got on the internet, read a bunch of articles, tried to educate myself about what a reverb is, how it works, how it's put together. Looked at some YouTube stuff. Took the reverb out. Tried a few things. Couldn't fix it. Put it back in. Read some more. Learned a few new things. Took it back out. Couldn't fix it. Put it back in. Read some more. Found out I did some things wrong. So, um, I thought there might be a good video on YouTube on how to deal with this but I didn't find anything so I'm just gonna make this quick rough uh, little video maybe help somebody out that has a reverb that doesn't work so I've already got, got it apart um, I've started this camera kind of in the middle of this progress so I'll just show you what I got from here take it from there okay hang on here we go All right, there's a reverb tank and the guts of it sitting there beside it. Uh, reverb's got, this one has three springs. You probably recognize this tank. Most of the time, that's what you see on the, on the bottom, of your, uh, bottom of your amp. Sometimes they're mounted on the side of the amp vertically. Sometimes I read they're actually inside the chassis. So, and uh, basically, looking over here at the amp, you have a couple of RCA jacks. Come wire comes out of the wire comes out of the amp chassis, and the two RCA jacks simply plug into the uh, in and the out on the reverb unit. Did you see that? The in and the out. Rever <clears throat> That's all the connections there are. The four screws to hold the thing in. So this, this actually sits inside here like this and it's suspended by these four little springs you see uh, it kind of floats in there, suspended in there on those four small springs. So the RCA jack plugs into the end, which when this is inside, through this connector, this connector, this connector right here, connects onto these two little prongs. And then you have the same thing on the other side. There's an input, processes, gets the springs rattling. Uh, this is the receiver side, kind of like a microphone, like a speaker, microphone. The side shakes and that gets, that gets reprocessed and that's how you get your reverb tone. So, why doesn't mine work? Well, there are there are several reasons I read why it might not work. One of the simplest is the connections are just corroded. So the first thing you want to do if your reverb doesn't work is work these connections, maybe spray them with a little cleaner. Some amps on the chassis end have RCA connectors here on the chassis as well. Oops, hold on. Um, they have RCA connectors on the chassis as well. Mine, the wire just goes straight in. So I would have to take this chassis out to make sure the connections are good on the inside there. So <clears throat> this is the input to the reverb. Hold on, lost it. RCA jacks where they plug in here could be corroded. Um, and 
then if checking all those external connections doesn't work for you then you have to move on to bigger and better things so the next thing I read about okay that's better was you can do a continuity test to test the tank there's basically three components if the connector connections aren't corroded then you either have the preamp output that supplies the amp could be a tube could be an IC chip that could be bad but reportedly very very rare that that's the case the reverb tank itself could be bad and I'm going to explain a little bit more about that in a minute or the output channel of the amp where the signal returns back into the amp could be bad also very very rare so what I uh, what I read was you can do a continuity test on the tank itself very easily and, and determine if that's where the problem is now, so I took the tank out and it said to test both sides of the tank and there should be a certain amount of resistance there if there's uh, no co continuity at all then you have a problem with the tank so I took my trusty testers and probes oops, and I tested from the middle of here to the middle of here tested on the inside from the black there to the black there green there to green there nothing worked I didn't have any conduct continuity at all so uh, I just assumed the tank was bad um, I've read mixed reports uh, that it can be bad to not have the reverb unit plugged in although I can't understand why it would be an issue if it's blown anyway but supposedly the output in the preamp needs a little bit of load or you can fry it so just to be cautious I put it back in then I found some more information on the internet and discovered that the continuity test is actually on each jack so you could actually test the continuity while the unit is still installed in the amp by uh, if you can reach it you could just stick one probe inside hit the inside contact and stick another probe against the oops <laughs> one probe inside the other probe on the outside but that <clears throat> that doesn't work very well um, if you're going to try to test it while it's still in the amp I suggest getting a patch cord this is way overkill but this is what I had handy plug one end into the input on the on the reverb tank while it's still installed and then you have the other end in your hands that you can easily then do uh, your continuity testing on what would be even better is if you had a patch cord that had an RCA connector on one end and two bare wires on the other end. Then you just plug that bag boy in and take your conductivity readings. So that's if it's in the amp still you can test that and if you um, you, you should probably go online and look up the information on your particular reverb unit for your amp and you should be able to find uh, what the ohm should be on the input section and on the output section 
It won't be the same, but they should be there. It should be somewhere around 200 ohms on this particular reverb unit. The input is 200 ohms and the output is 500 ohms. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. That's not what I have. <clears throat> so if you, uh, if you get readings significant, significantly different from that or in a worst case scenario um, no continuity whatsoever then you can uh, suspect you have a bad tank. Um, it's, there's chances you can fix it from what I read but you need to be good at soldering and working with very small things. So once you already have the amp out then I mean, once you have, the, if you have the reverb unit out and you want to double check your continuity testing, then you can do it from the inside of the unit much easier once you have it apart. And you would just put one probe on the one connector. In this case, we got green and black. And the other probe would go on the black connector. And then you take your reading on your own meter and uh, should be pretty close to what the specs call for. This would be the output. You do the same thing on the input. So if you get bad readings there, uh, one of the places that could be an issue is these little wires are very delicate and the little connector is very delicate and that connection in there could be broken and I read uh, advice you could take these wires that are just seated there with knife edges and you can take them out clean them up and, and uh, strip out a new section and reseat them and sometimes that'll take care of the problem. Another area is on the spring reverb unit itself where those connectors connect to connectors connect to right here. I don't know if you can make out those little prongs, two little prongs. You could also do your continuity test across those two prongs. Black probe on one, red probe on the other. Um, I still got zero on my input side uh, when I got down to this point. So if you turn this little thing around I'm sure you're not going to be able to see this, but I'll just mention it. There is a, there are a couple of tiny, tiny wires on the back of this thing leading from the probe back to the little transducer. You got an input transducer, you got an output transducer. Same thing, you got your two little probes and two tiny wires that run from their probes back to the trans tiny wires that run from the probe back to the transducer um, and evidently those wires fail quite a bit because of all the shaking and rocking that the uh, amp does when you're using reverb plus all the knocking it gets when you haul it to your gigs and toss it in the back of the car whatever so it's very common for those to fail and apparently some folks have been successful in actually wiring or soldering those wires back down. I, there is no way I could ever attempt that. But anyway, in my case, um, the wires don't look like they're broken. So the last thing that it can be is the actual little transducer itself has just failed and uh, there's nothing you can do about that but throw it away and buy yourself another reverb. Um, I haven't even gotten to the point of researching the price on my specific reverb but they're not very expensive. I, I, I saw pricing starting at $25 going up to $50 or $60 for replacements for fenders. So fortunately they're not very 
expensive. And as far as just replacing the unit, it's very easy. Four screws and two connectors. Okay, um, we'll see how this video comes out. And if I like it, I'll let you guys see it. I might come back um, for one quick shot and let you see what it looks like when it's put back together. That's bye for now. All right, guys, we're back for a couple quick more points. Turn the amp around because I didn't want to hear everybody bitching about not getting to see what it was I was slaving over. It's a Tube Works 7100 built in uh, 2000, long discontinued. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with it right now. 100 watts has one tube in the preamp section, it's a hybrid. 4 10 inch speakers and I barely got to start playing with it yet so give me some time get used to it one of these days maybe you'll see a video on it so back to the reverb unit um, this is it put back together you might be able to see how those how the whole chassis of the unit sits in there free floating and uh, just to review, amp signal comes in from the preamp, excites this side, it's the input section, rocks back and forth like a speaker, shakes the springs, the sound literally, literally transfers through the springs me mechanically, and the other side senses those vibrations and the springs cause it to bounce back and forth. That's how you get your reverb. Then uh, finally comes out the output section that goes back to the power section of your amp. Um, one other thing I didn't mention earlier. Stand by. Alright, where were we? Um, oh yes. I had the symptom, and this is pretty common from reading articles and forums. Um, when I turned my reverb knob up and I shook the amp, I would hear in the speakers the reverb. So <clears throat> what that is is a pretty good clue that your output section of your unit is okay. So then you can dial in, focus on the input section, look for broken wires, corroded connections, so forth. So that's just one more clue. Um, so I'm going to put this thing back in there, or maybe I'll wait till I get a new one. But in any event, that's my little class on uh, spring reverb repair and diagnostics. Till next time, boys and girls.